All right, it's Cassidy with the Hype EXE, and we're here with Kevin Wada. Is that how you say it? Yeah. All right, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his art. So tell me where you're from and what you do. I am originally from Los Angeles, and now I'm in San Francisco. I have found myself doing a ton of cover work for the big two and for Image and for Valiant, and um, it's been nice. It's been cozy. <laughs> And so what's your primary medium? Watercolor. And I do a little bit of digital, I call it icing, because it comes in at the end and just usually perfects a lot of uh, what I would consider mistakes. But 90% to like 95%, it's all traditional. That's awesome. And so how long have you been doing it? Uh, I've been working in the industry for about three years, I want to say. I've been doing watercolors for five years, maybe, which isn't that long. Um, I did digital in school, and I liked it, but then once I graduated, I, I, I saw that as an opportunity to kind of break out of the box and maybe do something to set myself apart from other artists. So what brings you to Phoenix Comic Con? Uh, they asked me. <laughs> um, actually, I was writing the coattails of Chris Inca, who is right beside me, who's another great uh, illustrator, and um, uh, he had asked if they were interested in bringing uh, me out as well, along with Babs Tarr and Jake Wyatt, but they had to cancel, so here I am. <laughs> and, um, what would you say is your favorite thing to make art of? Uh, I feel like people would say pretty people in fabulous clothing. Um, maybe I'd have to admit is my favorite thing. Um, it's been so long since I've gotten to sit down and do something completely for myself that I don't even know these days what I like to draw. The last thing I did for myself were, were these, um, these little, uh, pop stars as like warrior ladies. Um, and so... You know, when I finally have the time, I think I'm going to keep doing that. So it's just random stuff. Lots of pop culture-y, kind of like fashion-y stuff. Yep. And what would you say uh, is your process? Oh, it's, um, well, if I'm working for an actual publisher, it's always thumbnails, more fleshed out sketch, and then finish. It's, pretty, it's a pretty short process. Uh, if I'm doing something for myself, Sometimes I just sit down and go for it, like bust out the watercolors and go. Um, I'm usually more happy with a piece if I planned it out uh, and done even like a done like a color sketch to like figure out value and what colors I want to use. But there's not always time for that. So um, I know watercolor seems like a pretty interesting medium for the comic book world. How did you kind of get into that? It was it was mainly reaction to doing digital for so long. I um, right out of school was con uh, collaborating with a friend that I graduated with, Max Wittert, who everybody should look up because he's amazing. Uh, and he did sort of a, uh, he was also doing a lot of digital and traditional stuff, and he really inspired me to push further into doing watercolor. Um, it's just, it makes sense, it made sense to me, watercolor, because I don't consider myself a painter, and so it's like, you know, you draw something, and then you take watercolor, and you fill in the shape. Like, at least that's how I use it. I don't get too washy or, or painterly with it. It's just like, okay, I'm going to fill in the shape with a flat color, and that's it. So that's how I got to watercolors. Yeah, I know watercolors don't seem very easy. I mean, like, I think everybody used to have those, like, Crayola, like, six colors, and they were just so frustrating. <laughs> How do you keep it in the lines? Uh, I, I usually, here's what I do. So I get those palettes that have like the kind of like, um, yeah, the divots. And I do, I will make like, I will fill it up with watered down pigment. So I will have like little containers filled with um, things that I can do like complete washes with. And so if I know I'm filling in a big space, I'll make a bigger little batch of it. and. And I'll make like one or two different um, hues of that color. So like if I'm doing flesh, I'll have one little pot that's a little redder flesh and one that's very, you know, maybe orangey or very yellow. 
and and then that's how I'm able to like cover vast areas and keep it really flat. Well, that's awesome. And, it, and inside the lines. Yeah, and inside the lines. Um, so, what kind of projects are you working on currently? I'm doing some character designs for uh, an author. I don't know if I can say who, um, but I'm really excited for that because it'll be a lot of like really extravagant fashion, and it's very otherworldly. Um, I ha I'm the ongoing cover artist for Catwoman, uh, so that's just on a rolling basis. I'm turning those in, and what else? That may be it. I mean, I'm. I'm always talking with DC about other covers that they want me to do and happy to do more work for Marvel. Um, I will be taking over, well not taking over, um, there's a series over at Valiant called The Death Defying Dr. Mirage and I had done two covers for their first run and they're going to do another little short run and I'll be doing all the covers for that and that'll be coming out in the fall. And then yeah, other than that it's like kind of all over the place. I never really know what I can talk about. Um, yeah. But there's, I'll be doing variant covers everywhere. <laughs> um, what do you like about doing covers, just like single pieces like that? Well, my background is um, very traditional illustration. And so the, the whole concept of that is like, you have one image to tell a story. And so I'm very comfortable in that. And you know, it's a cover. And, and so it's one image. And you have to like, there's usually a narrative. Sometimes there's not. Very often there's not. It's, it's you know, just like a bunch of heads. But um, I don't have, I haven't like really flexed my muscles when it comes to doing sequential imagery. Um, I've done a little, uh, but covers, they just make sense to me and it's a lot of fun and, and you know, watercolor. You can do watercolor for covers. You can't really do it for interiors. It's, the production times are just too crazy. And um, what would you say is your inspiration for a lot of your work? I am inspired a lot by musicians, oddly enough, which is a, a place I got to, and I didn't think that that was what really inspired me, but I really like uh, looking to artists, like musician artists for inspiration. I think because um, a lot of like stage wear is very over the top and uh, very dramatic, and so that's always fun to see. Um, music itself is always very inspiring and fun to work to. Um, obviously my work has a, a big fashion angle to it, but I don't really have an, any like allegiance to any particular label or brand or anything like that. I just like the art of fashion. That's awesome. Um, do you have a favorite superhero? If so, who is it? Storm. I think she's amazing. Um, I'm trying to like think of another one though, because I always say her. But yeah, it's probably Storm. That's good. It's unique. <laughs> Most people are like Batman or yeah, Superman. So. And uh, what would you say is your biggest obstacle in being an artist, your biggest challenge? I guess I, I get zapped um, of my creative energy very easily and so like the second I get the slightest bit busy I it work becomes so much more painful and I just have no I have like nothing left to give and so I think it's finding the hardest thing for me is finding ways to stay inspired um, so just to keep those wheels spinning and um, and also like I think uh, there are moments I think for every artist where you look at your work and you're not happy with or like it's not a joyful experience after a while and so, you know, you just you kind of have to naturally evolve and your style will change and you'll like pick up some new technique that really excites you. And, and so it's always it's always that kind of like drive to keep looking for for that new thing that's going to fulfill you. Yeah. And um, if there's one thing that you want people who walk by or stop by to know about you, what would you tell them? Uh, uh, about me as an artist or about me as like a person? I guess that I can do things other than like this kind of stuff. Um, I don't know if I can do it well, but I feel like, uh, especially with editors, I think they, they know my work, and they know what I can do, and so I get, I get a lot of work that's very much like, you know, She-Hulk and like her lawyer does, like stuff like that. Um, but I would want people to know like I can do other things and 
you can throw other kinds of work my way and I'll be able to do it hopefully. And what's been the most rewarding part of your experience? I really like coming to these conventions and like meeting fans and meeting followers and people who have you know, been following me on Tumblr before I really kind of broke out into the industry. Um, I always say that like when you do freelance, you work in a bubble, like you work in your studio all day long, all by yourself. And so when you come to these events and you get to meet people and interact and like see how much your work excites people, it like refuels you a little, like it gives you motivation again. So I love interacting with fans. <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. And uh, there you have it. This has been Kevin Wada and you can check him out at basically at Kevin Wada everywhere on Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, all searchable under Kevin Wada. There we go.